1796, a company called Campbell and Clark, based in Calcutta, bought a ship and they renamed this ship the Sydney Cove. The idea was it was going to take supplies from Calcutta, uh, fine porcelain, rum, all the way to Port Jackson. So naming it the Sydney Cove, that was its destination. And it was a destination the ship never got to. Each year I work on a passenger ship, the Spirit of Tasmania. It goes from Devonport, Tasmania to Melbourne, Victoria. And part of what I do is I'm one of the artists on board. What we do is we create works of art on the Spirit of Tasmania during the day sailings so that the passengers can sort of enjoy and talk to us and learn a little bit about art and culture. One of the themes we picked was the story of Preservation Island and I did a series of one day paintings about Preservation Island. I would uh, plan them all out in a watercolour quick rough sketch drawing after doing quite a bit of research and then in one day do a complete painting while telling the story about whatever I was painting. In 1766 a company called the Campbell and Clark uh, that was based in Calcutta they bought a ship and they named it the Sydney Cove because that was its destination. Unfortunately, a destination it never made. 9th of November they left Calcutta. They found out that the ship leaked continuously. So men had to pump the water out all the time. It was exhausting work. So fatiguing that along the way six men died. Many of those were Laskers. Laskins were men who worked for the British merchant ships and they were paid really really bad and they were often not given quarters sometimes they had to sleep on deck or sleep wherever they could and being from a hot climate they're not used to the cold uh, so cold exhaustion claimed a lot of their lives along the way in Michael Nash's book Cargo for the Colony he writes however the constant physical exertion and the numbing cold took its toll on the exhausted Laskers. Five of the crew collapsed and died during the afternoon. So one of the first paintings I have is called Death of Alaska and it's showing you know, a guy dying where they're trying to pump the water out. Somebody should make some sort of record of these guys that had died. Sadly uh, nobody actually knew their names so there's no record of these men uh, dying, just their number. One guy that did have a name was Mr. Lewisham and he was the first mate. Being a European, somebody's recorded his name. Also in Cargo for the Colony by Michael Nash, uh, it uh, says, while attempting to close the hole of the sails, the European second mate, Mr. Lewisham, was pitched overboard from the main top sail yard arm and with the vessel underway he could not be rescued. This painting I'm quite happy with because it uh, took me about four hours and I'm very happy with the end result. I actually used my own hand, uh, so the sketch here is actually my own hand. And uh, so yeah, for a very quick painting, I'm quite happy with that. The third painting in the series I call Dangerous Waters. Not only is there lightning, there's rough waves, uh, the ship's now holding all its sails, but under the water is a shark. I've sort of enjoyed playing around with this whole above and below water thing, because for a very superstitious, fearful sailors, under the sea was this other alien world, a world of danger. And so I've put in the underview of the sea to show that there's a big shark heading the way, actually a great white. 
And so there's an element of possible danger there. The 9th of February, the captain decided to run the ship aground. It's the only way for the whole thing not to sink into the sea. He ran it aground on a small island uh, at the edge of the Bass Strait, and we now call that Preservation Island. The fourth painting in the series is landing on Preservation Island. I did up this rough sketch, mostly doing these figures out of my own head, uh, because I've got to do all, a lot of stuff in one day. Again, you've got the under view under the water, and we get a stingray going by. Not that stingrays are particularly deadly, but it has this sort of feeling of danger. Of uh, There could be something dangerous under that water. In this painting, a few of them are sort of landing. Some are looking back at the Sydney Cove as it's sort of starting to slump into the water a bit. And now they're sort of stuck on an island. On the 28th of February, 17 of the fittest men got together with the ship's carpenter. They fitted out one of the long boats uh, for a sea voyage. The idea was to go to Port Jackson and get help. And so off it went. On the 2nd of March, however, it got into trouble and ended up uh, being shipwrecked in Victoria. Now these guys had to walk hundreds of miles from Victoria all the way up to Port Jackson to get help. Whereas the guys on Preservation Island, they have no idea where they are or where the help's ever coming for them. When we start looking into the history of the Sydney Code and what these guys went through, it's hard for us to appreciate when we're sitting in our nice comfortable lounges how, just how harsh this terrible environment can be, especially if you want to try and survive in it. The men would have to find shelter the best way they can. And they might not always have a cave like we've got here. Unfortunately, that means probably the death of more Alaskans because uh, any comfort, the Europeans probably had it, what little comfort there was. When they're on their island, they had all these barrels of rum. Now, What's the captain going to do? Uh, well, he's got all these crewmen here, they're feeling pretty miserable, and there's a whole heap of rum. He decided very wisely to remove the rum from Preservation Island, and just off Preservation Island, there's a tiny little island, he moved it all there, he called it Rum Island. So, this next picture, called Death of Another Alaska, shows another Alaskan has fallen due to exhaustion and numbing cold. But in the background, you see the guys pushing barrels around. Again, under the sea, you've got this weird octopus, which is like a dangerous uh, animal in the minds of people at that time. In this next painting, I'm sort of showing the dismal despair of being stuck on the island for over a year. We've got one guy high up on the rock with a telescope looking out to sea, hoping that somebody's going to come. They don't even know where they are. They don't know how far they got blown off course, and they don't know if help's coming. The 17 men who built a longboat and gone out to get help, they don't know whether they're gone, whether they've left them, whether the cargo's precious enough to warrant a rescue ship coming out. They don't know if the men who've gone to get help, whether they're alive or not. And as it was, only three of them did survive out of the 17. So this is sort of like a, a man in the front there, he's just in complete and utter despair. And again, just under the surface, you get this strange alien world. This next painting is about a bit of a sunset. Just after the sun starts going down, the sky used to be blackened with short-tailed shearwater, or a lot of Tasmanians would know these as mutton birds. Out of the 17 men who left, only three survived to make it to Port Jackson. On the 17th of May, the survivors reached Port Jackson and they organised a rescue vessel. So on the 30th of May, the rescue vessel went out, not just to rescue the men, but also to rescue the rum, the fine porcelain and the cargo of the Sydney Cove. The legacy of Preservation Island and those 
poor castaway souls was basically this. On the third rescue trip out there, the third voyage, a young man, he's about 23 at the time, his name was Matthew Flinders. He was instructed to do a survey of the area. Now what he found or what he suspected is that maybe Tasmania might be an island. A year later on the strength of that, him and another man called George Bass, they went there and they sailed a ship all the way around Tasmania discovering that it was an island. Which is why we call it the Bass Strait after George Bass. But what this meant was that ships coming from Calcutta going to Port Jackson can slip through that strait and it takes two or three weeks off their trip, making it a lot safer because the less you're out there, the less likely you are to get shipwrecked. Hope you've enjoyed the story. Also, I hope you enjoy these paintings which are on display at the Bass Strait Maritime Centre for the next few weeks. See you later.